let's just get this out of the way right off the bat. I am a fanboy of the Sonata. I've owned a 2013 Sonata. I've loved almost every iteration of the Sonata since back in like 08. And this newest version of the Sonata, I really do love the styling and the design. I was part of the launch for the Sonata in Arizona last year, and there's a first drive video out on that. I've already done a full review on it as well. I've driven the hybrid version and have a review on that as well. This one, the inline, this is not my first time driving it. I drove it back whenever we drove the other one in Arizona, but it was still all camoed out and not completely done as a vehicle. This one is the finished product. And I've got a lot to say about it, but let's jump in first to uh, what is the inline and how is it different than the other ones that I've driven. So the inline is Hyundai's race inspired lineup of vehicles. And yes, Hyundai races. It's a more sporty variant. They have an inline Veloster. They have this inline Sonata and they just announced the inline Elantra and I'm sure it's going to go through a few more vehicles before it's all said and done. So let's dive into this vehicle, see exactly what's different about it versus the other Sonata trims, starting off with talking about what those trims are. All right, and the Sonata does come in a few different trims. You can get the SE, the SEL, the SEL Plus, the inline, and the top of the line is the limited trim. You also can get this thing in the hybrid, as I've mentioned before. But of course, this video is gonna be focused on this vehicle, the inline. All right, and really diving into this vehicle, let's start off with the exterior design here. And like I already said, I really do like the base styling for the new Sonata. This one has the same headlight design with that extra light bar that goes back into the hood. All LEDs, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. This is a longer, lower, and wider body than the previous generation of Sonata, which makes it a great platform for a sporty sedan. What sets this apart is that black mesh grille specific to the inline. You can see that inline badge up in that grill. The flare openings on the side by the tires are larger and functional. It still has that hood that comes all the way down into the grill. A great looking design, like I said. This one in phantom black really makes this thing look extra aggressive and sporty. We also have these black side mirrors with the integrated turn signals, matches the body color. They don't fold automatically on lock, which is something that I wish it did do. But we also have Hyundai's digital key that allows us to grab the door to unlock or swipe your finger to lock. The handles have the body color strip along with a chrome strip. You get that chrome accent that goes from the headlights all the way back around the body and back up over the cabin. This has a panoramic sunroof, which comes standard on the inline. Those wheels are 19 inch in specific wheels. Got a really cool pattern on them. And you get premium contact continental tires on there. 245 40R19s. You get larger 13.6 inch front and 12.8 inch rear brake rotors as part of the end package. Around the rear, you get the stabilizer little wing things up on the tail lights. Nice little deck lid spoiler. Very coupe-like body style, LED tail lights, and those quad exhaust tips that look really good on this thing. And again, are specific to the end line. All right, and the party piece, obviously, of the inline is this engine. It is a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, pushes 290 horsepower, 311 foot-pounds of torque. It's matched up to an eight-speed, in specific wet dual-clutch transmission, and it's got the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. It really is a great power plant. It's got some good power for this vehicle. 
and we're going to check that all out as we take it for a drive so let's continue let's jump in let's take a look at the interior some of the tech that's in this vehicle then we'll get it out on the road take it for a drive really feel that power and then it'll be time to start wrapping the video up and we'll end it by talking about the price competition and i'll give you my final thoughts so let's keep going all right guys and first thing you'll notice with the interior here should be all the in specific stuff including these really nice and comfortable in seats they are gray leather with this gray suede material you have the N logo here in the back red stitching with this red piping on it as well and that carries through the rest of the cabin with gray and red stitching on the doors on the dash on the steering wheel just a really good cohesive design nothing super crazy but it is the only interior option that you have when you're getting the end line but that's okay i really like it and again these seats are comfortable the driver's seat is a power adjustable seat with lumbar the passenger seat is a manual adjustable seat. So if that's something you're not into, that's something to take into consideration. But let's take a look around and check out a little bit more of the interior and not my face. So we do have the Bose premium audio system in here with 12 speakers and it is a beast of a system. It's nice and crispy and that bass is super loud if you're into loud bass. I'm not, I turned it down to halfway still a little bit too loud i had to turn it down even more but uh that's my personal preference so we did already touch on the seats but i also did want to mention that these are only heated seats here you do not have ventilated seats like you do in some other trim levels of the sonata you can see your manual buttons here for your ac and heat controls and moving further up is our 10.25 inch touchscreen with navigation and just like every other hyundai just like all the other sonatas this is a really great responsive system it looks really good everything's nice and sharp you do have apple carplay and android auto and of course we do have wireless charging as well as usb ports one USB type A for interfacing with the infotainment system, one for just charging, and a 12 volt, 180 watt accessory plug. You do get the electronic gear shifter in here, all push button, super easy, super responsive. You do get the N logo there. And further back, we do get a drive mode select, which we'll go over a little bit later, and an auto hold button. Obviously, you're missing some uh, buttons here that you might get in the Limited Sonata that aren't available here. Moving on to the steering wheel here. Like I said, it's that gray leather with red stitching. Uh, you've got some gray gloss right here. Really nice. You've got the N logo right here. Really nice touch. It's not really a flat bottom steering wheel like you might find in other sporty variant vehicles, but it's still a nice steering wheel you got nice grips up here and those paddle shifters. You've got the standard buttons for interfacing with your radio, with your cruise, and your driver information, which we'll talk about now. So this is your driver information display. It is a 12.3 inch LCD. Really nice. You can toggle through uh, different pages, different menus through here so that you're looking at exactly what you would need. Obviously with this N, I do like seeing those extra gauges there for the boost and everything. Also, when you switch between your drive modes, it will change, which is pretty cool and nice animations. We don't have a head up display, which is just fine. Don't necessarily need one. It's a nice uh, luxury feature if you can get one. We do have that panoramic sunroof like I talked about which is nice and large and has a good opening here but of course it's too hot here for having that open but again there's not too much different on the interior except for this nice inline trim so with that let's let's get to driving so one of the nice things about the new sonata platform is 
just the way that it drives it is lower and wider of a vehicle and that makes it uh, just that much more stable we do have mcpherson coils and struts in the front independent suspension in the rear which makes the whole driving experience really comfortable even in this inline it's not a super stiff vehicle it doesn't feel like you're driving something that's made for the racetrack which is a good thing. Some people might disagree with me on that, but I think that is a good thing. But it is just a great everyday driving car. And with that 290 horsepower that you get from the engine, no matter where you are in the power band, no matter what speed that you're going, if you just need to pick up some speed, putting your foot down will do that. So not only is this a fun driving vehicle it is one of the best driving sonatas you can buy and i think that's saying a lot just that little bit of extra power that uh, confidence in putting your foot down that confidence in steering makes this really a great vehicle to drive pushing it around corners just fine power out of the corners breaking into corners it does have those larger brakes on this inline which is great this basically takes a really good car, adds some sporty features to it, but makes it a phenomenal car. Fuel economy wise, you're looking at 23 miles per gallon city, 33 highway with a combined of 27 miles to the gallon. We've been getting close to that combined rating. Of course, we push these cars a little bit harder as we're testing them, leaving them idle as we're shooting them. So I don't usually get a good solid fuel economy number on that. But I can tell you if you drive this thing normal every day, you're gonna get around that 27, which is good for a sporty vehicle. If you're really looking for fuel economy, you do have that hybrid option, which is a great vehicle in its own right. But just pushing the power out of a corner or something like that just makes this such a fun vehicle. You don't feel like you're ever gonna be out of control. It's just a nice place to be. As we sort of already saw, you do have the driver select modes and you can switch that from a normal mode to a custom mode. You can do sport plus and you can do sport mode. There's no eco mode in this. It's sport plus, sport or normal. And of course that custom, you can custom set it up to exactly what you want. But even putting in that Sport Plus, you can tell you get a little bit more sporty, but it doesn't change it too much. You don't feel that suspension tighter, but that responsiveness from the engine definitely picks up. We'll do a little bit of an acceleration test here, getting onto the highway. Then we'll find a clear road and try to do like a zero to 60 test and really feel how that power is. But again, just as normal day driving, you don't really have to have it into Sport Plus to really feel the sportiness of this car. But we do have it in Sport Plus right now. And like I said, we're about to jump on the highway and see how that goes. Yeah, if you can hit what we hit there on the, uh, just entering the ramp to the highway, that's some pretty good speed. You also do have a lot of safety features here in this vehicle. And when you jump up on the highway or just driving on normal streets, you can put it into driving assist mode. We've talked a lot about this in other Hondas. It's really one of the better driving assist features that you can get in almost any vehicle but you can turn on the driver assist turn on the cruise control turn on the uh, radar guided cruise control and kind of just sit back and relax if you're doing a long road trip which i have done and it is phenomenal in this vehicle but let's find a uh, a bit of a off road that we can push this thing and try to get a zero to 60 time in right now all right guys so we got a bit of a back road here we're gonna test out the zero to 60. We'll try it a few different options. We'll try uh, sport plus, we'll try just the sport mode. We'll try with paddle shifters without, uh, see what kind of uh, numbers we can get here, but uh, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start off in sport plus. 
which means traction control is off. We're gonna put it into manual shift mode. All right, so we're dead stop. Ready, set, go. A little bit of tire squeal and 60. All right, and like I said, that was in Sport Plus. Let's try it one more time in just Sport mode, which means we're gonna have our traction control on. See if that helps with the tire squeal. And see uh, if that's any better as far as zero to 60 goes. So we're in just Sport mode here. Ready, set, go. A little bit of a hesitancy. 60. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of fun. All right, guys, and as always, that was super fun. Let's uh, find a place to pull back over, talk about the price and competition, and then we'll wrap the video up. So let's talk price really quick. If you're looking at a base Sonata, the SE starts at 23.9, so basically $24,000. The inline base is at just over $33,000. There's really not any options that you can get. You can get a few accessories, but not really any options. Everything comes as standard, the standard engine option. The interior is the only option that you get in here. Those wheels are basically the end wheels that you wanna get on this thing. The panoramic sunroof comes as standard, is not an option. So your only extra charge is basically a destination charge. So just over $34,000 for what you're in right here. And I think that's a pretty decent price for everything that you get and the amount of power and fun like we talked about in this vehicle. Of course, you could be looking at the limited or another trim level and be paying a little bit more than that. So this isn't really even the most expensive Sonata that you can buy. But all in all, I think it's a really good deal. I do have a few more thoughts on the price, but we'll get to that as we give some of our final thoughts. As far as competition, you'd be surprised. There's not even a ton of sedans on the market anymore. Obviously there is competition out there for this thing, but when you start looking at sport trims, you've got take into consideration that a lot of these sport trims on a lot of other manufacturers don't really give you much more than styling maybe a little bit bigger brakes and some styling cues but not a completely different engine better brakes and a full package uh, that makes it a almost completely different vehicle obviously this does share a platform and engine setup as the kia k5 GT, which we drove not too long ago, and I have a review out on that. If you're looking at a little bit more inexpensive, but fun sporty sedan you could also look at the kia stinger hyundai has nothing that really competes with the kia stinger you would have to go into the genesis brand to find that i think you can also look at the acura tlx the type s that has 355 horsepower which is pretty awesome and the new styling on it looks really good i haven't driven it yet but it looks like a really good vehicle and i've always really liked those acuras obviously you could look at something like the bmw 3 series or audi for and comparing the Hyundai with something like that just kind of proves that how good this inline actually is but I don't really think you're gonna get a ton of cross shoppers between Audi BMW and Hyundai if they're doing any cross shopping it'll probably be with Genesis but again outside of that there's really not much in the market these days that will compete with this and I think it's a pretty good deal but let me jump out I'll give you some of my final thoughts on it and we'll wrap the video up there. Let's go. All right, and if you were anticipating my final thoughts on this, I basically spoiled it at the beginning of this video. I am a fanboy and I do love this inline. It's a great vehicle. It's really one of the best all around performers in the segment that I've driven. It's a great sedan. You can take it and use it as a daily driving sedan. It's got the power under the hood. Obviously there are better things that you can get if you're just looking at performance based, but if you're looking for a great all around family sedan, this thing is awesome. One thing I would love to see with the N-Line is to bring it at a cheaper level, 
put cheaper seats in it, not powered, not heated, just cloth, but still nice. Get rid of this panoramic sunroof, just have a regular roof on it. Get rid of some of the tech bells and whistles, I don't care. Bring this thing to twenty-five dollars to $28,000 and it would be a killer. But even with that, the price that it is at thirty-three dollars to $34,000 is not bad for everything that you get here. The biggest issue I would say now is if you bought a Sonata that wasn't the inline, you did it wrong. You should have got this one. Even if you don't care about the performance necessarily of this, like I said, when we were driving it, it's just an effortless drive. You don't have to put it into sport mode. You don't have loud, annoying exhaust. It's just a great all-around car. With that, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Sonata inline. Go check out TXGarage.com for more written reviews. We also have written news and event coverage, plus a weekly newsletter you can sign up to if you're looking to stay up to date with everything going on at Texas Garage. And with that, thanks for watching.